back everybody. Here we are the day after Christmas. Time to get back to work. I don't really feel like doing any serious projects. I just wanted to kick back and run some trains. You know it's weird after you do all that work like I, over in there in Lake City and building the gas station and the hooked up signals the other days. Anyway, you know what? I'm like I don't feel like building something or working on something. I just want to run some trains. So here we are. We're over at Eugene in the south yard. Crew's been called in here. They got uh, some work to do. They're going to use this lovely uh, Baldwin here. It's on. Uh, it's a Pensy unit. It's in pretty rough shape. It came up from Mingo Junction. Uh, they wanted to send it up here for some work at the coal dock for whatever reason. But so the, what we got in front of us here is he's got a get some empties out of the way. He's got a string of empties there on the dock. He's got a string of empties here that actually are sitting on the south yard runner which is kind of unfortunate because there's a coal train waiting to come in. It's that New York Central bituminous train that starred in another earlier video. So he's got to get this an empty train together and out of here relatively quickly because uh, the recrew is called for that train shortly. So he's going to get those out. I think the first thing he's going to do is take these loads, get them up to the coal dock. That will clear South Yard 1, that, that yard track. He can move the empties over there, pull the empties that he's got off of the dock. There's a couple other mixed cars here, two gondolas that came out of the engine service facility. And two box cars and that were sitting up at company stores. They want those out of here too. They've been sitting around since like a week or so before the holidays. It's really getting on people's on nerves. So, <laughs> so he's gonna go to work. I'll try this again. I'm not sure how it's gonna work with just me, but uh, hey, we'll try to do it. I'll I'll try any video that people may or may not want to see. <laughs> like I said, that coal train is sitting up there at Eugene West. Way up there. I don't know if I can zoom in on him and <clears throat> ah, there he is. Like I said, he uh, outlawed before the holiday. Wasn't a lot of traffic. They just let him sit there on the main, but the recrew is on the way. So we gotta get moving over here. I think the power for the empty corner of the hostler over there is gonna be a Pensy F3 set. The sharks uh, aren't quite ready, but they'll probably go back on another train before too long. So, without any further ado, let's see how this video turns out. Just uh, kind of chilling out and watching a little bit of action here on the layout. So let's see here. There we go. Okay, they're on board, and uh, I think they're ready to go. Are you guys ready? Okay, here we go.
And that turns out we're short three cars here that need to go on, so I have to pull these empties. While I do that, pull the string of empties over to South Yard 1 to clear that South Yard runner. And then bring these empties up here, or the uh, loads back up to the dock. So, Okay. It's the way things go. By the way, this is a, uh, a Bowser locomotive. It's got a ton of momentum on it. So, which, I don't know. I, I know it's fun and realistic, but I tend to... I, it seems when I'm switching, I, I just want the locomotive to run when I turn the throttle. I know, I know, I know. We've got to be realistic, but... You know what? It just sometimes it actually gets annoying to be honest. But once you get used to it and you kind of know what you've got, pardon my giant finger there. But it is what it is. Again, once you know what you got, it's not too bad. Oh yeah, he, he, he takes a while to get going. And I usually have him going too fast. <laughs> he takes all like a jackrabbit. <clears throat> I'm like, whoa, easy, rugged. Oh, I like got dirty track. See? See what happens when you do things live? All right, got him back here. Had to give him a little nudge. And again, someone had asked, I think on the uh, tour video, what I use to clean the track. And I mentioned some things. This is one of the, it's a little Cratex block. I don't know why this guy happened to want to stall out. Now, I haven't cleaned the track in quite a while. And this is a not a real abrasive thing. It's just extra fine. I bought it at Traverse Tools. And I cut them into different sizes. But it seems to work fairly nicely. So hopefully there's just a little bit of stuff on the rails. Again, like I said, none of my locomotives have... Uh, keep alive in them just yet. That's something I do want to do. But, uh, okay, enough chit chat. Let's get back to work. By the way, that silver monolith there, that's actually the antenna for the wireless <laughs> wireless receiver. The plan is to hide it, but I don't really don't notice it anymore. You probably notice it in the video, like, what in the world is that thing? But Here's an interesting predicament. I don't think I have enough headroom on my yard lead to pull this entire cut and clear the turnout, which is back up there just behind that first loaded car. Hmm. I might have to double him. Well, all right, here's what we're going to do. I don't know how that would do this. I'm just going to, just for fun, I'm going to push him in the clear. What would be the fastest way to do that? Uh, all right. I don't know. Let's see how much room I got. I don't think I'm going to have enough room. Woo! Easy, rugged. I 
I'm sure the prototype would have a much longer yard lead. Now, of course, I could take them on the main line, but, you know, huh, Doss is for the boat. And so I might have to make a double move here. But yeah, I think I'm going to. Man, it's going to be awful close. All right, I got to go see how much room I have at the other end. I'll be right back. Well, here I am. I'm in the weeds. I almost ran over Mrs. Uptograph and her son. We're out walking Fido. And it's really close. I'm like one car off the turnout. So if I didn't have the load of coal cars, I actually would have made it. Okay. So, I guess to be prototypical, I probably should cut it. But you know what I'm going to do? I'm probably going to 050 it just because this is not a real railroad and uh, that's what I feel like doing. So, alright, let's get this guy ready to go back up. <laughs> so, through the magic of editing, yeah, he was able to fit. No worries. Now, if this was a real obsession, I would have made him do it right. But, you know, this is just a video, so. I don't want to bore everyone just watching coal cars go back and forth. Although, I'll try to edit this out so things are a little bit smoother and not quite as laborious. Okay, so we're going to bring this cut onto this track, clear the runner. And the other coal train can come in. Of course, and his power has to go to the house to get soy vista. I don't know if there's any room to get him in there. I, I, I can see what I'll do. I'll park him on one of the runaround tracks or something like that. All right, I'll pause this while he's getting his cut, cut into South Yard 1. All right, bringing the loads back up here so we can... Ready to go and get the empty train out of town. Alright, we're going to grab those other four cars and place them head out in the train because any manifests or cars like that are, according to the rule book, supposed to be head out. That one bright headlight, isn't it? He's actually too long because he's still hanging out past the clearance point up there and he is all the way if he drawn over this way quickly 
quickly. This is getting boring. He's probably going to foul that side too. Hmm. Means I'm going to have to double him. And again, they probably would have known this in the real world. This is just me goofing off. Alright. So what we're going to do. What we're going to say. And again, this is a wasted move. But we're going to go ahead and put those head end cars back on the other track. Because they're all empty. And then when the road power comes over, we'll go ahead and just have to double the train. Uh, such is life. Okay, we accomplished that little trick. So... What he's got to do now, he's got to go over to the cabin track and grab a cabin. So he's going to head over there and do that. And then, he's going to have to wait for the coal train, the shocks, and the, they're out there at Eugene West. They're going to come in. Once they uh, clear, he'll pull down the ladder, tack on the cabon, and then the road power will be ready to head over and get him out of Dodge. All right. We are getting there now. And this is pretty much what the South Yard guy does. And it can be different. I'll set it up different ways when they show up. There might be loads to move up, empties to bring down. But in general, they're getting either an empty ready to go, and there's a loaded train coming in. Very short, you know, right at the beginning of the session is one of the first, first things we do. Just to give the guys some... Oh, great. And I got all the cabins. <laughs> all right, let me fix that. I'll be right back. That's one of the things I mentioned, you know, with these serious momentum units. At least the way it's dialed in on this locomotive. It's, it's, uh, when you're switching, it takes some care. Which is, you know, the way it is, I get it. But let's be honest. When we're playing with trains, sometimes it's just a little bit too much. Kind of like running the bell and the horn all the time. Yeah, I know I should be doing that, but you know what? It just literally gets annoying, so <laughs> we're not going to do it. So, all right, so let me see if I can, uh, actually, he's got to stop here at the office and grab some food, because he's got time, so I'm going to stop right here, grab some beans, and then we're going to bring this New York Central train in. Oh, won't that be exciting? Alright, crews on board are going to bring her in. Hopefully, we'll see how clean the track is.
Okay, get doing a couple to really go to the house. All right, so the south yard guys, they got the cabin placed here while the road power is moving. But of course, being by myself, I can't show all that at once. It would have happened concurrently. And sometimes it depends. Now, when a train comes in like this, the cabin on that train may or may not have to go to the cabin track. It depends. If it's going to turn right away and go out on something, they might just let it sit there at the stash in the yard or the next move could be the south yard would take it up to the cabin track if needed. Uh, for now, I'm just going to let it sit there. But uh, what he will do next is get out of the way. Well, actually, he's okay the way he is. The road power is going to come out once these sharks get into their terminal track. It's kind of crowded over there, so I'm going to put them out of the way somewhere. And I talked a lot about the turnout. Just FYI, I'm just kind of babbling here. This turnout here leading into the, this one here, leading into the engine terminal is actually number 10. I figured if I'm running, you know, multiple unit lash ups and maybe some larger steam, I had a number 10, I had the room, so eh. Plus things look nice, going through a big, nice number 10 turnout, so. I mean, I made it, it's a fast track, so I made it, I might as well use it, right, so. I had a roof for it. There's also one over on the main line coming into Sharon at the other interlocking, but. All right, so. This guy's going to go sit way over there for now. Now he can still pull up and get some fuel and other accoutrements that he needs. Then that F3 set's going to come out. And then double those four car head-end cars. And then get out of Dodge. And pull him up to the pad. And normally the road crew, they would do this. They would have to get their power. It depends how long it is. Like if there was another empty train ready to go, they would just come in, service, maybe take a little bit of a break, you know, if the south yard isn't quite ready. All right, so he's there going to get fuel and sand and other goodies. And we'll get that F3 set fired up. Uh, but then, you know, sometimes they might sit for a while. And sometimes they might turn and uh, head out relatively quickly in the same session. So, all right, let's uh, let me fire up his F3 set and get that working. Okay, cruise on outbound cruise on board. I'm gonna get this puppy out of Dodge here. This is a uh, ABA set, uh, Broadway Limited. It's an AB set and a separate A unit. Uh oh, see, oh boy, see? The risks of doing things live, I forgot to throw that turn out. But that would have been embarrassing for the crew. <laughs> oh yeah. And this is one of the leftover ones that's still powered. Okay, crisis averted. No, that would have been so embarrassing. And meanwhile, obviously, these loaded cars are getting unloaded. Because in a session, if they come in loaded, they could possibly, toward the end, depends how long we go, you know, be ready to pull down. Because they just bring, if the guys are working the dock, they just bring them in, you know, go by and unload them. doesn't take that long. So it's possible that late in the session, you could have the loads ready to go. I mean, empties ready to go. <laughs> Okay. And we'll fly our drone over to the uh, 
better location to watch this exciting action up here at the other end. Okay, continuing on here. A little white building there. It's just kind of sitting there now. That's off of Shorty's layout, Shorty Parker's layout. I figured there might be some kind of little crew office there, or just, you know, something. Not sure if I'm going to keep it there yet or not. Pardon my reach. Let's see, does this have a short toot? No. Eh, okay. Now this obviously this would be the road crew on this train doing this and the south yard guy would be off on his next task. I try to plan enough to keep him busy the whole session. It's, it's hard sometimes and he might have to wait at certain points if there's just, you know, like this train being made up, if, he, if things are on the way, he just can't. He just kind of can sit back and rail fan a little bit. So, let me make sure they coupled. I don't think they did. And not quite. Sometimes these couplers are finicky. Alright. You also notice that it's a little bit darker here. I probably should add one more light above this area. Yeah, it's not real bad when you're here operating, but obviously on the video, cameras which are much more sensitive to the light levels, you definitely notice it. So, get him pulled up. He's going to back up to his train and talk to the yard master to get permission to get on over to Williamsport. You might notice I kind of reach in and throw those picos by hand. Eh. I mean, I, I guess I kind of prefer if we use the old skewer, but you know what? As long as you're careful, I'm okay with it. Uh, we'll see. It doesn't really bother me if they use their hands. I want to couple back up to the other. Okay. So now what he would normally do, if this was an operating session, just swing this. It's a little bit cumbersome because I'm here on my tripod trying to keep it anti seasickness inducing. Alright, so there is a dwarf that you guys can't see. It's behind the Pensy cabin right here. But what he would normally do. Now the South Yard might have told him he's okay to rock and roll. But normally what he'll do, he will pull up to that. See, this coupler is here. You guys can't see me messing with this, but this one A unit coupler. Eh, I might need to shop this. Real world, real world. It's turning out the coupler on the A unit here just doesn't seem to want to play nice. I wonder if the spring came out. See, it's just... And now it's got it, or will it stay that way? No. <laughs> okay, see, last time I ran them, I ran the other way, so this unit wasn't there. Alright, I need to fiddle that. I don't, I don't think it's the gondola. I think it's the A unit. Let me take a look and see if I can remedy this quickly. Mechanical guys, mechanical guys, come out here. Okay, we're back. Turned out I took that unit over to the bench and I swapped out the uh, stock coupler, I guess, with a uh, KD number five. And it seems to have fixed it. The spring was a little wonky on the on the coupler on the unit. So anyway, so and I'll do that in a session. If there's something that I can fix. During an op session, you know, maybe five, ten minutes tops, I'll go ahead and fix it. If it's any more than that, you know, it's just, you know, it won't run or it's shorted out or it's something that looks more serious, then I will, uh, I probably would have just pulled the A unit 
and said, hey, you never had that, and just go with the AB unit. And that's just the way it is. Okay, so what he can do is he can pull, I moved the one cabin. There's the dwarf. Now, what he would do is he'd pull up to the signal if he hadn't already talked to the south yard master. And I need to add a phone booth there, but he would call. The crew can call DJ Tower, which is the where he needs to get permission, actually. Now, like, normally the south yard would do it for him, but let's just say he would call DJ Tower. You know, this is... Uh, S291 ready to depart eastbound at Eugene East or whatever. That's DJ Tower. He controls this interlocking. Actually controls Eugene West. They uh, have them all controlled out of here out of DJ. Like I mentioned before, what I'm thinking of doing, maybe, since I backdated it, and before, when I was modern, the dispatcher was going to just control everything, and there was no towers because, you know, they're all pretty much, pretty much all gone nowadays. What I may do is add a phone system, and there will actually be a phone in the cradle that the crew can pick up, and they call DJ Tower. Now, I'm not going to have actual tower operators. It'll be the, the one person. That's the dispatcher slash tower operator. So the crew would call, ask for DJ. Where's the DJ? Ask for DJ Tower. The dispatcher slash all consolidate tower operator would answer and so what do you got okay I'm here I'm ready to go and he'd say okay hold on let me check with the dispatcher even though it's really him and he would come back and say okay signal indication you're cleared on the main one east or you know give him instructions or, or whatever then the crew hangs up the phone says thank you very much and away they go so that's what I'm thinking of doing now that phone system is going to cost some money um, and you need phones at every location where the crew might need to call in. But anyway, for now, it would just be the crew would ask me as the, you know, kind of the floating dispatcher, tower operator, trouble solver, question answerer, etc. And uh, I would say, yep, you're good to go. And you know, the crew can even throw it. You know, this crossover is controlled by the tower which is by the dispatcher so if I have those phone systems the, the dispatcher would actually throw that and the train is not clear to leave and the crew would say thank you very much hop on board and they're gonna get out of town so maybe we'll follow this guy just for some fun we'll get him uh, get him moving here Maybe see how how things look going across the layout. Okay, we're rolling here. He's ready to depot. Pretend we're flying a drone here at Eugene Station. <laughs> Oops. <laughs>
All right, just for fun, I tried to get it like we're on this road bridge, but I just can't get the camera on the tripod in the right spot, so this will have to do. <laughs> and another uh, example of the funky indications you get, and I'm not running the CMRI computer program, so those signals are just kind of a random event. <laughs> you never know what you're going to get. Okay, now there is a way, even with the SIMR not running, you'll notice at this signal bridge, what I did, and this is what I got hooked up for the last couple days. What you can do, basically what I did underneath the layout, is grounded all the red LEDs, just so it looks a little bit more normal. If I didn't do that, again, you'd get some funky indication here. So, it's not perfect, obviously, for an op session, it's not good. Because the signals never change like they should. But, for now, okay. So, I'll bring them up here. He sees the red signals, and he'll stop. But, I've done that on a couple different, not every one, because then it's annoying to have to go back and, you know, re-unground everything. But, this one, I, was, I wanted to test it. Make sure it worked okay. So, you know, I went through all the different LEDs and whatnot. So I said, all right, I'll just leave these grounded. It looks nicer, you know, a little more normal. Although, if we're going to have an operating session, he'd have to have permission through that. Okay, well, there's a phone there. You can go up and call the, the Lake City operator. Say, what's up, Bubba? Why are you stopping me here? <laughs> well, normally, he probably would have. If he's going straight through, he'd just have a green signal. So, all right, one of the fun things you have to deal with until you get the computer running.
Okay, so over here in Fairview is where he would now go into staging. So I figured I'd kind of get a shot here against me by myself, so I kind of have to do this a little bit in a kludgy manner. But he would come under here. Assuming he's got the signal, they normally are going to cross him over here to head back into staging. Although they could cross him over at Wallace Junction. The crossover in Lake City won't really help. It's just the wrong direction. So we're going to ease him back into staging. Then I'll walk around and actually bring him into staging just to show you what the guy back there would kind of do. I like running my train slow. I know some people like to seem to think they're like slot cars, but I, I just enjoy it. Plus, in all honesty, the run to get over here really isn't that long. So it's certainly not going to take a guy a whole ton of time to do this. So I tell him, eh, if you want to run fast, go ahead. But, you know, let's try to enjoy it and run slow and have a little bit of fun. And again, he made it over the... <laughs> He made it over the swing gate just fine. Actually, a couple times to get some of these shots, I've had to do multiple runs. Again, it's just me. So he heads back there into La Stagine. He's all lined up, so he should be fine. But I'm going to stop him and then just go back and just kind of just to complete the run, you know. All right, we'll go ahead and stop him here. So he's heading back into staging. Let me uh, pause, move over there, and we'll watch him come into staging. All right, here we are, here we are back in staging. Like I said, this is the, the control panel. Now we're coming in from Fairview. We're coming to come in here. So the staging, the east staging, is Williamsport. You see there's three tracks there, and I usually use the main line. I usually use that running back into the pocket, which is a little extension that I can use. I usually stage four trains heading westbound and four trains heading eastbound back here at the very start of a session. So I am using the main line, so to speak, uh, for the use of the first loaded cold train that comes out. So now what I'll do, since I'm bringing this guy in, I'm going to go ahead and turn the pocket on because all those tracks are normally off. Well, they're controllable. And that way you don't get all kinds of sound locomotives going crazy. So I'm trying this back here with a tripod, so I'm, it's a little tight back here. But all right, So we're going to come in. I'm going to bring him in on the main because I have all kinds of stuff everywhere else. I haven't been back here in a while, so I'm not sure how clean the track is. So then normally there'll be a person back here who would kind of rub. Ooh, easy boy. Right now, just kind of yell back and forth, but he would come in, and then I'm going to stage him on the main. Normally, I put him in one of the other dead-end tracks, but I'll do that now. And I normally try to keep him off the main just because I don't like to... I mean, I do have to do some hand fiddling, which I don't like to do a whole lot with the rolling stock, and especially now with the motive power, just because I just don't like to do it. So most of the time, again, in my experience, these operating sessions, two and a half, three hours, if I run, you know, the four trains over here and a bunch of trains in and out of Olean as well, I really don't have to do a lot of work back here. I have it totally set up so before the session starts, and then I will, you know, run the trains where they're going, bring them in, and then have to do a, a bit of work after the session to get everything reset for the next one. But, okay, that's eh, not a huge deal. But. So for now, I'm just going to run him in the pocket. Straight ahead. I think my turnout set that way. Yeah, it looks like it. So the, if this was a session, he was one of the early trains. Obviously, I'm blocking the main, but all the other tracks are still open, so it's not a huge deal. I guess be careful we don't run off the end of the world here. Okay. 
So he's in. And yeah, see, there is a little bit of a problem. I would have to do a little bit of hand fiddling with this one only because it's a bit longer of a train. You see, he's hanging out there past those other turnouts. So, what I would have to do. What I would do is, you know, I'd have to, again, I really don't like doing this a whole lot, but, you know, just get some cars out of the way and either take them and put them up on the, on the storage tracks or, or just, just, because I probably will use the other tracks throughout the session and I can't block the turnouts, which means coming from about here, I'd have to hand fiddle those four cars. Ah, okay. And again, this is a little bit larger, longer train than I would normally tend to run. But, okay, not a big deal. Uh, these are Bowser cars, and as much as I really don't like to handle stuff, okay, you do what you got to do. So, All right, so that gets him back into staging. Like I said, then, you know, that guy would, uh, that the crew, the engineer, would then kind of, okay, what's next? You know, what's my next run? Because that really, I mean, I played around with some scenes here and there, and, so I, I looped them around the layout a couple times to get different views, but it doesn't really take all that long. So I turn him off. So he would then go back out and do another train. So usually an operator that runs, and there's going to be other traffic, so sometimes you're stopped and held and waiting for other trains here and there and that kind of fun stuff. So usually in a session, one guy or one individual, um, he might be able to run three or four trains you know it depends now if you're running one of the locals uh, obviously that takes you a little bit longer the Eugene turn can take you about oh, an hour and a half or so to work and I've also instituted one that kind of runs over to Sharon so I can add some time to that and some of the manifests take a little bit longer especially if you run into Eugene you drop off cars you pick up cars you know I can make those runs a little bit longer the coal trains are pretty much Eugene to staging, staging to Eugene, or Olean if it's one of the coming off the Olean branch. So, okay, that is that. Let's go back to the uh, other layout and see what else is going, or the main side and see what else is going on. All right, back over here at the South Yard, and the guys over here been like, "Hey, we've been sitting here for hours. What's going on?" <laughs> so in this case, um, that's my. Uh, this is my lens cap jiggling on the tripod. He is going to have to move the cabin over because this is the only cold train it's in. There's not going to be another one for a while. They don't run out of Olean all that often, uh, a couple times a week. So during a, a particular op session, there may or may not even be one of those cold trains. It depends what kind of mood I'm in. There's usually always at least one, if not two, uh, Pensy cold trains that come out of Williamsport and the associated number of empties that may or may not make it back during the same session. So so he's going to go in, he's going to grab the cabin, put it in the cabin track, and then once these coal cars here are empty, we'll go ahead and bring the uh, Olean train up and get it unloaded. So now what I figured I'd do, just for fun, is to wrap it up. I know this video is kind of all over the place, but what we'll do is we'll go to the engine terminal, and we will see how the turntable works. Just, eh, just to, and I'm just kind of killing time, babbling away here, killing time. So, all right, it's be kind of tight with the tripod, but I'll try to get in there and just have a little bit of fun. Be right back. Ooh, okay, a little bit tight here. I'm jammed in the corner trying to keep this on the tripod. So, what I want to do, you know, I, I, this F3 AB set. He's going to get ready. He's already fueled. He's going to, he needs to go somewhere out of the way to go uh, back to Olean with a manifest that's being made up over in the North Yard. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug him in. Consist 30. There we go. And then I'll just see if he uh, runs again. I haven't run this in a while, so we'll see how things actually work here. This could be embarrassing, but we're going to try to move him onto the turntable. As I don't have to turn them, I'm just going to move them over out of the way. Okay. 
Okay. Then the move. Uh, I don't know if you guys need to see this. I'm just curious. And this is really kind of tight. I apologize for that, but all right. So there's. <laughs> you can see the controller, and all the other the uh, actual roundhouse tracks. I get to run switches, so they're off. So you don't have all kinds of luck when I was going going haywire. And I'm just going to move him over a couple of tracks. So all you got to hit. Now what it should do is go to one track and stop. Okay, so I'm hitting the counterclockwise button. And what it'll do is I'll just go one track at a time. Seems to go, it seems to go past a little bit and swing back, but it all seems to line up just fine. So now what I can do to get him out of the way. I'm just going to park him up there because he's for too long. Crew will come in and take the train up to Olean. So I'm going to get him up out of the way and just park him. I like the Shark, which is an AA set. I don't need to spin it. Obviously, an AB set, depending on where they're going. You may need to run them on the turntable, which is fun. I did, at one point, I wanted to bring the Shark set and I the Pensy Shark sets an ABA set and say that, okay, so the leader is okay, the trailing unit, which would have led on the way back on an empty, the windshield's broken. So you got to spin it. Well, an ABA set won't fit on the turntable. I was going to have them come in here, break it apart, you know, spin it. And it it would have been a, a little bit of a challenge, but I think kind of fun and, you know, kill some time again because those cold runs aren't that long. But breaking down the consists is kind of kludgy. Um, the one thing I don't like uh, as much about the easy DCC is they're consisting. It just isn't all that easy. I think some of the other systems kind of beat it out in that regard. But, okay. So I didn't do that. Uh, I just didn't want to put the person through that. I mean, I could have done it because I run the layout. I know the system. But someone else trying to go through and, and unconsist it and reconsist it and just, uh, it would have been uh, a little bit too kludgy. So, all right, so that's again. That's how the turntable tends to work, um, and we do use it. I want to, let's say I want to go back to the main track. I, I think I can press it and hold it. It'll skip that one, then let go. Now it's going to keep going. Okay. All right. So I went to. The, I didn't want to go to that track. That's okay. I'll just push it once and kind of line it up straight. It goes there it is okay so that is that so with that I'm going to go ahead and stop here I figure this is enough of a video but uh, just you know some more fun just playing around the layout just showing you kind of the concept of how the coal yard south yard works and just running some trains you yeah, know just have a little bit of fun we're allowed to have fun right all right more to come guys thanks for watching